Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview as well as sharing some benchmarks for this SSD from Plextor. This is the M5 Pro Extreme. This is the 256 gigabyte version. It's also available in 128 and 512 gigabyte capacities. Uh, as far as the drive and the contents of the box, those will all be the same. However, please bear in mind that for my benchmarks, those will only apply to the 256 gig version. We'll start off with a closer look at the retail box. First off, it's a 7mm high drive, which means it's ideal for, for ultra-slim notebooks, provided you do have a 2.5-inch uh, form factor slot available in your notebook. Other than that, of course, it's also would be perfectly at home in a desktop PC. It's a SATA Revision 3, 6 gigabit per second drive, uh, includes a 3.5 inch bracket. Again, this is a 256 gigabyte capacity. Uh, up here we have some of the features listed. I'm going to sort of be going over those as well once I take the drive out because I'm going to do a quick disassembly. They do include some disk cloning and backup utilities software that you can download. Uh, some more specs over here that I already mentioned. It does include a DRAM cache buffer of uh, 256 megs, 512 megs, or 768 megs uh, per capacity as, as shown right there. Also, uh, all the performance charts listed right there for the different capacities. 1500G shock resistance, mean time between failure of 2.4 million hours. Uh, also, operating system support right here, Windows, OS, Linux, and Mac. Uh, file formats listed right there as well, FAT16, FAT32, NTFS, EXT2, EXT3, and Riser FS. Five-year warranty provided from Plex Store, and let's go ahead and take a look inside the box. So inside the box here, we have some packaging. First off on the back is your 3.5 inch to 2.5 inch drive bay adapter. So if you have a computer case or a desktop that you're gonna be installing this in with 3.5 inch drive bays, most standard drive bay mounts will line up with those. You can mount the SSD to this and then mount that in a drive bay. Uh, that's mostly for use if you don't have a 2.5 inch drive mount in your computer case. Uh, here's some information on the Plex Store SSD 5-year limited warranty. Also, a quick installation guide uh, here for both laptops and desktops. Uh, I'll sort of walk you through all that. Let's see, anything else as far as documentation? I don't think so. Here's the drive itself. We also have screws, which are tucked in here quite, quite snugly. Here we go. Uh, and screws are simply to help you mount the drive to that tray and mount the tray to your computer case. You do also get that cloning and backup software that's provided by NTI, so you get the NTI Echo and NTI Backup Now. Uh, the keys are under those post-its, um, which I've covered, uh, and you can download those from the NTI Corp website. Here's a closer look at the drive itself, as you can see. Uh, it's a very clean design. It's a brushed aluminum look. Actually, the entire housing is made of brushed aluminum. You have a nice Plex Store logo there on the top. You have, of course, your standard 2.5 inch drive mounting holes. Again, this drive is only seven millimeters high, so it should fit in most uh, laptops, at least that have 2.5 inch drive bays and seven millimeter high drive requirements. Here at the back, you can see your connectors. So you have the longer connector there. That's your serial, serial ATA power connector and the serial ATA data connector right there to route the cables over to your motherboard and power supply. Here in the back, you have the Plex Store model name as well as some additional information. And uh, next up, I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this thing. So with the removal of four teeny tiny screws from the side, we can remove the cover. And please bear in mind, guys, uh, if you are going to disassemble your SSD, you will be voiding your warranty. So I do not recommend it. That's why I do it here, so you guys don't have to at home. Uh, four more screws inside that I have already loosened, and we can pop out the SSD PCB. Now here on the top, we can see our NAND. That is your NAND flash memory, uh, all those packages right there. It's Toshiba 19 nanometer MLC, two bits per cell, toggle mode NAND, which is a very high quality, very fast NAND. Uh, and then here on the back, I'm scattering some screws around. Uh, but here on the back, we can also see uh, two DRAM packages, and that's going to be your included uh, memory or your cache, DRAM cache. And let me just remind myself how much that is. 512 megabytes, so 256 megs on each of those DRAM packages. More NAND packages right there. Again, more Toshiba toggle mode NAND. And then your drive controller, which is right there, and that's a Marvell 88SS9187. Plex Store has custom designed the firmware for this controller to make sure that it performs up to their specifications and the uh, firmware that the drive is currently shipping with and that I will be showing you the benchmarks with is version 1.02. Let me just run you guys through my screenshots here. First off, it's just kind of a system configuration one. Uh, as you can see, we're using the Intel Rapid Storage technology. Uh, we're running an ASUS uh, Maximus 5G mother motherboard. That's a Z77 board. And um, we're currently connected to the uh, native SATA Revision 3 6 gigabit per second port on that board. 
for our testing. Uh, next up, we have ASSSD. So this is a pretty popular uh, SSD-specific benchmark. Uh, runs a series of tests, sequential 4K, 4K 64-threaded. Also gives you access times. Spits you a, a final score at the end, and a final score of 1,115 was what this drive achieved, which I can tell you guys is quite impressive. It's a very fast drive. Also for access times, 0 0.036 and 0 0.041. Very, very fast. Uh, next up, we have the AS SSD compression benchmark. Uh, this is just testing drive compression. The Marvell controller that uh, this drive is using does not do on the fly compression. So, as you can see, from 0 to 100% compression, our lines stay pretty stable across the board. We're hitting at about 513 megabytes per second on reads and about 446 megabytes per second on writes in that particular test. Next up is the AS SSD copy benchmark. This is sort of simulating um, some more use case scenarios such as ISO programming gaming situations. Here we can see our speeds 251, 222, and 269 megabytes per second as well as the duration that each test took to run. Next up we have Atto, and this is probably the most popular benchmarking utility for both hard drives and SSDs. It's used by lots of drive manufacturers. Um, you can change the queue depth on this, and that is uh, making use of the native command queuing feature of the drive. Uh, queue depth, uh, for as far as typical home use, you're usually going to see between 1, 2, maybe 3 or 4 queue depth. Uh, in enterprise applications, you're going to see more like 10. Whenever you're benchmarking an SSD, it's always kind of a balance between real-world tests, synthetic tests, and then tests that can kind of see how fast the drive can go. This one's cool because it actually tests a bunch of dis different transfer sizes. It gives you results for each one, and then the uh, results down here are shown in uh, actually kilobytes, so you need to divide by 1,000 to get your final results. But as you can see, for reads, we hit uh, about 540, maybe 540. Uh, 546 megabytes per second. Uh, for the writes, we hit about 454 maximum. I also ran it at QDEPTH 10 because that is the, uh, the most popular benchmarking utility, as mentioned by manufacturers, to sort of see what performance the drive can hit. If you guys remember the box here that has the numbers on the back that's indicating sequential reads, sequential write speeds, uh, we're supposed to be able to hit 540 and 460, respectively, for reads and writes. Uh, we got quite, quite close, 540. Actually, we got past it for the uh, reads. 460 for the writes, we got right up close to about 453. Some of our other tests, we got a bit closer to that 460 megabytes per second write speed. Next up is uh, actually a disk speed test. This is by Blackmagic, and this is primarily used to test how uh, appropriate the drive is for video tests. So we have a bunch of different video resolutions and levels of compression, and it's giving you a green check mark to say, yes, uh, this drive is suitable for that. And we got green checks in most all of the boxes here. And then we can see up top here some more direct numbers there, 437 megabytes per second for write, and just shy of 500 megabytes per second for reads. Next up is Crystal Dismark, another uh, popular free to download benchmarking utility. So if you guys want to try this at home, you just go over to the Crystal Dismark website and download it. Uh, the drive is advertising 100,000 100, input output operations per second. And there it is, or at least just, just a hair shy of that. So 99,000 IOPS uh, for the 4K QDEPTH32 random reads. For 4K QDEPTH32 random writes, 85,000 input output operations per second. And again, that's, uh, that's bumping right up against the numbers that uh, Plex Store put on the box for us. You can see the numbers listed right there, as well as uh, input-output operations per, se per second listed right there. One other quick note here, when you're talking about sequential reads and sequential writes, that's when you'll see bigger numbers like 500 megabytes per second. However, day-to-day -day computer use, 4K is much more common as far as what your system is going to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you're looking at SSDs and you're not doing video editing, for example, where you're actually going to be doing a huge amount of reads and writes to the disk, uh, paying more close attention to your 4K numbers will give you a better idea of the sort of increase you will see in sort of day-to-day uh, -day use with uh, any given computer that you're using at home. Here's HD Tune Pro, uh, just a quick test for this one. We can see min, max, and average megabytes per second right there. Uh, we can also see our access time again of 0 0.043 milliseconds, similar to our AS SSD test, and our burst rate of 395.7 megabytes per second. Finally, we have PC Mark 7. I uh, didn't run the full suite on here, I'm just running the secondary storage, ben secondary storage benchmark. There's your score right there, 5,453. Again, I know I don't have a point for comparison here, but that is a very good score. We can see, uh, again, a bunch of different simulated use case scenarios, Windows Defender, importing, importing pictures, video editing, Windows Media Center, uh, all the scores for all of those in those 
end up giving you your cumulative score of 5,453. And that's gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the Plex Store M5 Pro Extreme SSD. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.